in terms of either a bunch of guys missing today, anything? Well, some guys are just sore. I mean, we after the game, you know, with Mike Hughes, soft tissue, you know, it's going to be you know, maybe a week or so. Uh, same thing with Cornell Armstrong, who wasn't who wasn't down there. And then Frank Darby, same thing. So with those guys, and there's some other guys that really short term is just kind of a little nicked up. And, you know, we got a pretty heavy week ahead of us. There's some guys that obviously didn't play in the game. Those are the guys that we went heavy with today. We're going to turn around practice pretty heavy in the morning. So came out here, we needed the speed, especially the guys that didn't play. We needed the work. So that's all we were trying to do today. So there's some guys we held in that will be out of practice tomorrow. So uh, is Dahlman in that? Dahlman's in that, yeah. He's just a, a little if it should be fine, and we'll just take in the morning, and maybe it's another day, but nothing, nothing we're concerned about. You uh, uh, Frank Ginto is wandering around right. out here, so what, I guess what's going He'll on? He'll be a correspondent, and we'll have to put him by 4 o'clock. And uh, Patterson, is he a rest guy also? No, I mean, CP, he's got a soft tissue, um, so we'll just take it. You know, we'll be smart with it. Nothing concerned about long term, all right? I know. Long week down south, BG Led. I got you, but you know what? <laughs> Grinded it out, man. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, um, so we'll be smart with that. Mm -hmm. And Phillips made it back today. Um, was it good to get him back out at a. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's training camp. I mean, it's just. We got guys, and, you know, we, it's like we chart everything. There were some guys we held out down in Miami that wasn't some kind of veteran thing or status thing. We just look in the reps, and you're looking to play the long game. Mm -hmm. You got three games, and how do you want to divvy those reps up? You know, we, we used it heavy to, for Logan to get an evaluation. Our starters, exception of you know some guys that are be injured. I mean, everybody's going to play unless they've got something that medically we're going to need to keep them out. So at some point, so give or take, you got 180 reps. Hopefully, O and D, it's just round number. And how do you want to divvy those out to ramp them up? But our guys, you know, the starters that are healthy, ready to go, they'll play Friday night. This week, last year, was a week they got like the offer made. Between last week, mm -hmm. they made a big move. I mean, other couple of guys. Last year, yeah, absolutely. Year. Like, this year, is a guy like Albert Huggins in that world? Yeah, I mean, it, look, it, I think what helps, you know, you, you could even feel in the first quarter, you know, guys haven't played football in a while. The practices were great. Even that first quarter, you could almost feel it for both teams. Regardless of who's out there, there's a, there's like, it's just, you can just tell people haven't played in a while. And then the game settles in, and you can see guys, and, and Huggins did a nice job. You know, him and Timmy Horn, I thought, flashed the other night up front. Um, you know, Huggins is coming off a, a knee. And so it was good to see him. You can see his confidence growing, and so hopefully he can continue that. But that's a, it's a great way. To, I mean, there's nothing that's – it's the closest thing you have to a regular season game. Right? You're tackling, everything's live, and so it's good to see some guys show up. Uh, yeah, Coach uh, Walker's the only other one on my attendance list. Uh, There'll be a lot of guys. We kept a lot of guys inside. Uh, is, Mike, is Mike something serious? Well, there's a lot of guys. Like, like I said, there's a lot of guys we kept in today, and, you know, there's a couple of things that you know, we may have to make. May affect some other guys, and we just got to let it play out. You know, we got to see the thing that you have to do in the training camp as you're going through 90 guys is, you know, we working guys out. If there's guys that are going to be out the rest of camp, you got to make decisions on. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things going on. You mentioned Timmy Horn. Kind of what do you envision for him? Obviously, him so far. Just guy there trying to make the team and, and contribute. Timmy played some for us last year. Um, there's good competition. You know, it's we feel like we got a lot of depth in the D line and. Somebody's going to emerge that's going to be in that rotation is going to help us. And certainly he's, he's had a good camp so far. It says something about the team, I would think, in the depth. You said this before, that a guy who started, I think, five games for you last year is not a certain Well, that's every year. I mean, you hope. I mean, it's the hardest thing to do is, you know, year after year, I don't think people realize how hard it is not only to get to the NFL, to have some kind of success, but really to attain it. Right. I mean, that's every year you're watching your own guys. I mean, you're certainly – Guys, that you invest in, you're expecting them, but you you got to be objective. And so, as you're as you're putting the piece together, you know you're evaluating everybody. And so, it's the hardest thing to do. I mean, to, to that level of pressure and performance, day after day, can you improve? And so, you got to get. You know, that's why I got a lot of faith in Tim. I mean, he came back this year, and we'll see how it goes. Mike Walker looked like a guy who was offering you some flexibility because he could play inside or. Mm -hmm. How was he doing both things, and how valuable is that? We got a lot of guys playing a lot of spots. I mean, we've cross trained D'Angelo and, and AK, um, guys that could train inside, that you know play a base DN, that can go outside to play, you know, stand up and rush situations. I mean, we've got a lot of guys that are cross training. Same guys at safety, you know. Um, there's guys that 
Micah Abernathy can play safety, can play, play big nickel. We, I mean, it's it's everybody. I mean, it's versatility. Unless you're just about an every down starter, you need to have versatility. And if it goes to fourth down or kicking game, and uh, we got a lot of guys that are doing that, and that's our job to cross train them. Sometimes it's not just hey, the next guy's got to go. Same thing on the offensive line. Tackle goes down. What's the best? Is it moving somebody out? Is it moving somebody across? I mean, those are things we're always working on, Josh. Uh, you know, contingency plans. Yeah, I mean, I think you look at it, uh, you know, it's preseason, you know, we take it with a grain of salt. You know, some, some people overreact. You certainly see that every year around the league. Um, but I think it's a good measuring stick to see, like, where you're at in your program, your depth, especially if it's a game that we're, a lot of your veterans or guys that played a lot of snaps aren't playing. And I thought that intent, the style we want to play, was it perfect? No, never going to be perfect. But, but no matter who was in there, I thought, these guys were, were competing, and there was a lot of passion. I mean, those defensive backs, they were flying around. I thought the, the old line, they played physical. Uh, that was good to see. I mean, we got a big play in, in the kicking game. I mean, that was it's a hell of an opportunity back there uh, that, you know, D.I. that took advantage of. So, uh, please in that regard. But there's there's a lot of things we got to clean up. In terms of, you mentioned D with punt returns. When a guy makes a play like that, is that – how much does that put you in a different situation – or not a different situation, put you in a – Closer to a decision situation, maybe. With uh, it's never permanent, you know. I mean, Avery was unique. I mean, we had a lot of faith in Avery. That was his number one job. But you know, sometimes you get in a game, and if, if you've got multiple guys that can do it, certainly you want. There's a guy if you think that's a a weapon back there. That's you know, hold your breath because this guy can, can take it to the house. I mean, I was good to see D do that. But guys that can be productive, and then but if, if sometimes a guy may be worn out, and you're saying, hey, you need you need to. He's playing full time. Whatever the game plan is, he's in there. If you got another guy can go in there, you trust that he thinks capable. So, it helps have depth. But if somebody earns it, that's a that's a weapon. That's certainly a step in the right direction when you can make a play like that. And this is obviously maybe a question. There's more question for a couple weeks on the road, but it seems like it probably fits as you and Terry start to look at stuff. If a guy like D were to win the job versus a guy that that's job one clearly, right? How much does that change maybe some of the machinations of what you're able to do? Even a lot. It gives you a lot. Guys. Sure, it gives you a lot more roster flexibility. Yes. Now that you've had some time, how would you evaluate Logan Woodside's performance throughout Florida? Yeah, I thought Logan. Um, again, I've been fortunate. I've been with Logan at a couple different stages of his career. I, uh, I thought he played really well, poised. Uh, you know, you know, it's, you can just tell by I mean the body language in the pocket. I thought we had gave him ample time for the most part. I thought his decision making was pretty good, and he was pretty damn accurate. You know, and a lot of times too, when you get in those games, when you know, whether things don't go exactly how you want, you know, and you, like a lot of times what happens too is can you let a bad play go? And I thought he did a nice job of that. You know, whether it was a negative play coming back and getting us back on track, wasn't perfect, but I thought he played pretty well. Does that keep the wheel spinning now early on about keeping three quarterbacks? It's part of the big part of the evaluation, but we have got a couple of weeks to go. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many things that can happen. Um, certainly, it was a positive night for Logan, but that doesn't, you know, like a lot of these guys, even took, we got a long way to go. One more injury question. Hennessy, do you expect him back this week? Practice? You know, he did work on the side field last week. He went down to Miami. We didn't hold him back here, so that's encouraging. It's just one of those things. Like I said, it's day to day, and it's just, again, everybody's body's different. And uh, I, I know Matt's a tough guy, and he wants to be out there. And so it's something he's dealing with, and we'll just have to see. We've been ramping up day by day, and it was good that he came out there last week. He worked on the side field, so we'll just have to see. The yeah, Coach, what's the build up for this week is in the uh, – Big scheme of things. That Still training season. camp. So training camp. You know, it's a fine line. Like, that's the old, you know, metric when people used to go to the third preseason. Oh, it was a game plan week, and they kind of uh, threw it. We just need a lot of work. Uh -huh. Training camp, and we'll, we'll get to, you know, a little bit of sensey stuff at the end of the week, but it's not going to be preparing for a playoff game or anything like that. So, but uh, we, need, we need to continue to work on training camp. Is the number of soft tissue injuries in such a quick and short span concerning? No, you got to put it in perspective. You got 90 guys. I'm not the, the smartest with math, but when you've got you know 85 guys healthy, it's unfortunate, and we we, we feel pretty good about it. And yeah, it's just perspective. Okay. It's the best way. I, I, again, I don't know what 85 out of 90 is. Uh, this is where I need Ferkser on math. Uh, <laughs> I'm, a math person, not a person yeah, I'm just so. I'm, I'm not I'm not being in vain. Like, no, 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 I know. But it's 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 funny how people's language. You get all hysterical. You say a number, and we take everything seriously. Like nothing's more important than the health and safety of our players, our team. But you got to look at the, the big picture. 
Now, if we had 20 guys dropping, I'd say, what, what are we doing? But a guy goes into a game and it happens early in the game, like, yeah, so I wouldn't put it as concerning yet. I don't know the color code. It's like it was the weather. Um, so I think we'll be all right. Hopefully, I don't want to jinx myself. I think we'll be all right. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you.